Hi there guys, welcome back to MS Power User. You're here with Tom, where this time we're looking at the Windows 10 anniversary update for mobile. In a similar vein to its PC counterpart, this update isn't a massive overhaul of the system. It's not going to change the way you use your Windows phone, but more of a laundry list of minor updates to make the overall experience of Windows 10 on mobile loads better. Let's get started with the UI changes that are present on the lock screen. You'll notice that the back button has actually been replaced with a camera button, which is a lot more useful and gives you quicker access to the camera when your screen is locked. The lock screen now also integrates media controls into the UI as well. Beyond the lock screen, the start screen has also seen quite a few updates. Live tiles now all update at once rather than randomly like they used to. They can now also update their badge icons at the same time. And generally speaking, the apps will load faster if they have an active live tile. Chaseable live tiles are now active across the system as well, which act in exactly the same way they do on the desktop. Tapping a tile while a story or notification is displayed will take you directly to that story or notification. Speaking of notifications, they've also seen a bit of a shake-up in the action center as well. The header for each set of notifications is now smaller, allowing for more space for the actual content. You can also hold your finger down on a notification to switch off those alerts or go to the settings for it. Dismissing a set of notifications no longer makes the screen turn to black either between them. Also, if a quick action turns a functionality on or off, such as a flashlight or Bluetooth, it will now show on or off for a short period of time, giving you some context to what you have just toggled. In terms of customization, you've also got a bit more flexibility of how your quick actions appear, which can now be rearranged through the settings menu. Probably the biggest and most exciting update included in the anniversary update is the ability to sync notifications between your Windows Phone and PC. This is done through Cortana. If you head over to the settings within the app, there is a toggle option to send notifications between devices. Once this is done, all of your notifications for your phone will now appear on your PC. And if you're not a fan of having them all appear, you can head over to the notification sync settings to choose which alerts actually go to your PC. Once you've done that, you can actually use your PC to reply and react to notifications as well. There's been some changes to the built-in apps too. Cortana has seen a few visual and system-based updates which are all useful and additional to the app. There is now a dedicated button at the top of the app for Cortana to listen and identify music. Also, the helpful cards are no longer displayed as standard, now requiring a small swipe up to get at them. You can now set reminders with photos or shared information from other apps too. Cortana now supports turn-by-turn -turn directions with the new Maps app as well, which makes it easier to use Cortana as your travelling companion. The listening animation has been updated from jumbled text to an audio wave that represents she is listening. Another great update is that Cortana is now available in Spanish, Portuguese and French. Microsoft's Edge browser has seen some improvements across the application as well, the first of which is the ability to swipe while browsing to either go back or forward. Wordflow now works when typing in the search bar, and there is also the option to require a prompt to pop up before a download starts, rather than just going for it like it used to. In the tabs window, private browsing is now easier to access with an icon next to the new tab icon, and the X button for closing tabs has also been made a little bit larger. In other apps, Skype has been updated to the UWP app we saw in the Windows 10 desktop update. The new design should be familiar if you've used the app on your PC or tablet. The Store app has also seen a fresh lick of paint and it now makes it easier to browse through the app selection with bigger and clearer buttons for featured collections such as top apps and games. The Wallet app has been updated to Wallet 2 which now supports tap to pay in the US, however for the rest of us it looks like we might have to wait a little longer for that one. There are a bunch of other little revisions throughout a lot of apps as well and the following are a few of the more noticeable ones. In messaging, you can swipe a conversation to delete it, and the emoji set has been completely revamped, bringing it up to speed with the iOS and Android counterparts, and the Wordflow keyboard has also been updated to improve the recognition of longer words. The phone app now allows endless scrolling through its options. The FM radio has been removed as a default app. There's now better reliability when navigating between the camera and the camera roll. The Insider and Windows Feedback apps have now been condensed into a single feedback hub and there's also been some improvements to battery performance for people who turn their phone screen on just to see the time too. So that just about covers everything in the Windows 10 mobile anniversary update. It's a small bunch of neat tweaks and extra features that should make the operating system as a whole run better and feel a bit more complete. 
If you've updated your phone to this, do let us know what you think in the comments below and be sure to check mspoweruser.com for more information regarding the update.